O'Neal, give him hell bell, is a destructive power puncher. Dale Cowboy Brown is a well-groomed smart boxer. It's a classic matchup for the IBM Cruiserweight World Title. A look at the ESPN.com rankings detail how entrenched these two men are among the best 200-pounders. Bell's number four, while Brown's five-fight win streak has him a top seven. This is O'Neal Bell's 26th fight. Only one has gone the full distance. We have seen him rip through the best, like when he knocked out the then soon-to-be champ, Kelvin Concrete Davis. More recently, Bell obliterated Derek Harmon with a vicious display of skill and force. Those were just two names added to the list of hunted down trophies. Former champ Arthur Williams and title challenger Ezra Zellers have also felt Bell's power. Now he meets up with Calgary's Dale Brown, a dedicated pro who has fought for the world title twice before. Since his last title shot loss, he's been impressive. He beat down the power punching Richie LaMontagne in summer 2003. Then this past February, he quickly discarded Shelby Gross, who was grossly overmatched. A closer look at Dale's career shows that he toppled former world champ Robert Daniels, but his three losses were by KOs to world champs Giroff, Braithwaite, and Jean-Marc Ormec. Dale says he has solved that problem with the most intense training camp he's ever had. Bell says he'll beat Dale at his own game. They're fitting this fight to be um, a boxer versus a puncher, but I want to beat the man at his best, at his best style ever, so I'd box a boxer. You know, quicker hands, uh, definitely have the power, let my hands go, the knockout will come. Well, I think he has to be a little bit more apprehensive coming in. He's not going to come in lunging at me because I'm just going to slip and make him pay. Uh, that's our game plan. Anyway, we're going to box him very early. We're not going to get into trades with O'Neal. We know that he's strong. We know that he can punch. His record stands to tell us that. IBF title on the line. Two men whose careers intersect tonight. O'Neal Bell, Dale Cowboy Brown, and there is O'Neal Bell. He was supposed to fight for this version of the world title in February, but Kelvin Davis vacated the belt. That was due to promotional issues. He's 30 years old. He gets that golden opportunity now three months later. He's been patiently awaiting this night. 6'2", 199 pounds, and he can flat out bang. His last five, all knockout wins. Hasn't fought since September. That was against Ezra Zellers. And his average fight doesn't go past five rounds. And for the third time in his career, Dale Brown is fighting for a world title belt. Boxing's his life's passion. His mom is a judge and a boxing official back in Canada. Six foot one, he's 33 years old, checked in at 198 and three quarters. His last five. All wins. And all five of these fights came right after his title shot loss to the current Ring Magazine WBC WBA champ, Jean Marc Mormon. Dale Brown says, I'm going to do what I do best. I will box. I'll make O'Neal Bell apprehensive, and my jab will be there all night long. You heard O'Neal Bell moments ago say, I will outbox the boxer. He was born in Jamaica. He moved to Delaware, finally landed in Atlanta. And he was an all-state wrestling star in high school. Then he took up boxing, had a limited amateur career, but his sensational physical tools have gotten him to this point, a dedicated, dedicated professional who's been learning on the job, and boy, has he ever. The gold records at the Hard Rock adorning this Gentlemen, spectacular facility, you, but it's a belt that is the top prize you tonight. Protect yourself at all times. Do not make me pull you guys apart, okay? No unsportsmanlike conduct. Is that clear? Good luck. Touch gloves. May the best man win. Armando Garcia laying down the wall early on. The ring experience. Dale Brown has fought 11 more pro fights. He's put in over 100 more pro rounds. He's fought five former or current world champs. The other experience of note is that he's 0-2 in his experiences of fighting for the world title. But Kevin Kelly, you were with me yesterday right when here. he turned to us and said, right here. the difference now 
is that I went away for training camp. I left Calgary, I went to Vegas, I had the best camp I've ever had. Well, that can make a difference. Uh, pre preparation is everything. Uh, I mean, I live in Vegas, and I can see the difference. I mean, you got top quality sparring in Vegas. Every fight is in Vegas, from Mayweather to Corrales to all the heavyweights, Bird, uh, Ruiz, they all live there. So the quality opposition in the gym is incredible. Your sparring prepares you. But the point is still, the fight is a pinch touch different because he's not sparring with O'Neill Bell. He may get in caliber opposition like uh, maybe he's Brazil Europe in the gym. He might be doing Virgil Hill in the gym. So he's getting caliber opposition. So we'll know when the after, if it goes longer than the first round with a guy like Give Him Hell, that we'll know if he can further you know, accomplish what he wants to accomplish here tonight. O'Neill Bell, you saw the power numbers, 88% knockout ratio. Three first-round knockouts in his career. Brown actually has five, but Brown has a good sense of who he is. Wants to box and give angles and make sure the jab exists throughout the evening. Call the arm now. What actually might help Dale Brown, actually might help him, is that O'Neill said he wants to box. So, you know, it's easier to somebody to box you than there's a knockout artist like O'Neill. Because O'Neill's a knockout artist. So usually he comes forward and tries to get you out of there. So that gives Dale Brown more of an opportunity to actually maybe win, try to win a fight. As long as that lasts. You know what I'm saying? O'Neill Bell fires off a right hand and then doubles up a left to the body. Bell returns, overhand right attempted, but muddled up by Brown. There's that jab. It's so important to Dale Brown. O'Neal Bell says speed is power, and I have both. Saw what he did to Derek Harmon. He outboxed him early and then just broke him down and finished him off. The one thing you have to see, he says he's going to box, but I don't see much of a jab uh, that he's shooting. Not a jab, jab with any kind of conviction. He throws the overhand right, but he's off balance when he throws it. You see him, he throws the right hand, doesn't come back with a jab or a hook, so it leaves him off balance. See, there he goes again, right off balance. He throws the overhand right, and he's off balance when he throws it. And Dale Brown should capitalize when he does that. See if he can get a counter opportunity here as this fight develops from what you picked up early on here, Kevin. Straight right to the body for Dale Brown. Body shot right hand comes in from O'Neal Bell. Now. And Let's Kevin Kelly, if the subsequent rounds after this first round go this way, this is the kind of evening that Dale Brown would be looking for, is it not? That's what he's looking for. He wants to box the whole night. Time! Round number two of the IBF Cruiserweight title fight here on Friday Night Fights, presented by AutoZone. O'Neal Bell in the purple trunks, Dale Brown wearing the black with red trim. There's that overhand right. See an abrasion in the middle of the forehead of Dale Brown. I believe it's bleeding. Uh, some blood's trickling down from it, I believe. Yes, it yes is. there is now blood coming down right between the eyes. So it's something we will take a look at, see if that blood starts to get in the eyes. It's in a very interesting position, right in the middle of the forehead. Yeah, it's not interfering with his eyesight, so it's not in danger of stopping the fight, but uh, it could open up and get wider. It's very interesting to see O'Neill Bell uh, boxing here. Um, trying to put a box display on him. But Kev, why? He's kind of awkward. Why? I, I believe he's trying to show a different, if he had show adversity, like you said, trying to do something different, something he hasn't done. If he feels he can win this fight doing this, he's trying to prove something to himself. I don't think it's the right well, time well, or why, place why, to do it. Yeah, why, why do you need the challenge? Why do you need to challenge yourself at a moment when the IBF title is on the line? Unless he's trying to draw Dale Brown into having some false confidence which would open up some opportunities in the middle and later rounds. I don't understand his reasoning. I, I can't lie to you on the line and, and say this. I think they look very awkward, very unorthodox trying to trying to box uh, Dale Brown. Dale Brown is a little bit more seasoned at this. Uh, you see his movement. He's getting hit with certain shots, but O'Neill's right balance looks really off. Of course, stop, there's stop, more on, room for error with O'Neill Bell. He can change the fight with one punch. But he's getting hit right right there. Overhand. Overhand right. right comes in that time. And he paid attention to that. Trust me. He's going to have Cowboy now. real fast. And uh, he paid attention to that shot. 
Brown can punch first. I mean, in like O'Neal Bell has all the knockout power. So Brown no, does got to see when he punches. And, and, and he's in boxing format. So of course he's got great snap on his shots. This is what he does. So actually, if Bell is fall, falling into a victim, into a Cowboy Brown's fight. I mean, O'Neal Bell is not doing himself any justice here as a champion. Look at that. He throws the overhand right and he turns south for almost. He's off balance. His footwork's not right. Punch out of there. You know, I'm just a man of time, I think, before he resorts to what he normally does because I don't believe this is working out for him. He, I, I gave him the first round, but I don't believe he's exceptionally sharp looking and, and trying to win his title. You gave O'Neal Bell the first round. I gave him the first round. Really? I like Brown in that first round. You no. Know, but I like Brown in this round, to tell you the truth. And around number two, Joe Tessitore and Kevin Kelly filling in for Teddy Atlas this week. Kevin, you've been in this exact position before, fighting for a world title. What goes through the fighter's mind early on? Is there that extra pressure that everybody talks about? It depends if you put it on yourself. You know, the problem that I had winning my first world title was that I was supposed to be champion already. I didn't win a world title until I was 36-0. and 0. And I was, un I was undefeated, so I was supposed to be champion, but I was fighting a guy that was champion. So I felt like I was champion of the world. Then I said, what if I don't win the world title? Ain't so this you, bizarre? You, you applied that pressure to yourself. So I applied the pressure to myself. And then I won the title. I was happy when it was done. And I went on to have title defenses and, and become victorious. But I actually liked it better winning my second world title because nobody believes I can win. The odds were against me for a change. And that is better. Adversity, overcome adversity. That's where it's at. Let me have you switch uh, mindsets here and go from fighter to trainer. If you were in each of these corners, what would you be saying right now to these I two? would tell Dale Brown, take advantage of what O'Neal Bell's trying to do. Um, utilize your jab. Keep boxing him. Keep O'Neal Bell at the end of your jab. Keep him on the outside. Don't let him get on the inside. And when he gets on the inside, tie him up so he didn't get none of that power off. And if I was O'Neal Bell's trainer, I'd tell him, listen, wait, wait, just, <laughs> I know you wanted to go out there and try to beat him at his own fight. But if I was you, throw a jab, step it behind a jab, and punch to the body to slow down the Cowboy. You know, the Cowboy, you saw, was cut early on in round number two. And the referee, Armando Garcia, is saying that that was caused by a punch. Let's go, punch on, you're holding It seems deal. like that cut is well under control. You talked about the fact it was bleeding, but nothing that was going into the eyes. Bob Miller, the fine cut man in the corner of Dale Brown, able to handle that after the second round had finished up. There's O'Neal Bell now charging behind that jab and then digs to the body. You know what's interesting is in preparing for this fight, one of the things we looked at was the cut men. And obviously Bob Miller doing a good job for Dale Brown. Oh, no, Bell is hurt tables. right now. He, got hit he turned the tables right. there. No, he is hurt. His legs are wobbly right now. He got hit with an overhand right. Look, he's not reacting right. And Dale Brown I agree with you. Right now, up against the ropes. Got a chance to knock out O'Neal Bell. Can you believe this? I mean, in terms of events, the puncher got hit with a shot. Oh, my. Looping right hand from Dale Brown. Bell was against the ropes for a few moments there. There's another right hand that comes in. Let's see if Dale Brown can take advantage. O'Neal Bell's legs does not look right. His legs kind of look clunky. I can say oh, his balance looks off right out. now. He's getting, oh, there, there it is. Again. You saw it again. Another right hand snapped out from look, Cowboy. Look at his legs. His legs have locked. O'Neal Bell's legs are locked. I tell you, he has no bend. No bounce. His legs. No, no bounce. And who knows what happened for this fight? I tell you, right now, Dale Brown can get a knockout and win this world title in this round if he puts, puts the pressure on Dale, on, 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 on O'Neal Bell. Listen, if you've watched him during his career, you know that O'Neal Bell has gone down before. Happened against Kelvin Davis. He ended up winning that fight by TKO. But the way and Dale Brown is very conscious of that. He knows that Bell is capable of an instant comeback at any point. But now. I agree with you that his legs Still have not looked way. good here in this third round. His knees are locked. He's on his heels. He has no balance. He goes over. There he goes again. Right hand comes in this time. Dale Brown's able to back it up with a left. Dale Brown right now is, is fighting the smartest. Oh. Staggers him with a right hand. And Bell is trying to shake it off. Last 20 seconds here in this third round. Dale Brown on top of O'Neal Bell. Two previous times he fought for the world title. He was in that position. Now he's on top. Bell tries to fight out of the jam. Fighting 
his way out of the corner, digging in oh. the body shot. But what a big, big round for Dale Brown. O'Neal Bell hurting that third round. O'Neal. How you feeling, son? Take the knee. Here's what happened, Kev. We take a look. You see O'Neal's legs are really shabby right here. They, his legs, knees are locking right now. He's getting hit by every shot that Dale Brown's throwing. Dale Brown landing shots, crazy glancing shots, and it seems like O'Neal's not reacting right to him. Later in that round. As you later in the round, you see him, Dale Brown catching with that straight right hand again. You see the legs locking on his heels as O'Neal tries to come back, looping wide shots. Dale Brown can read those shots, come up the middle and on the inside, and they go to the legs buckling of O'Neal Bell, I tell you. I'm very nervous of O'Neal Bell right now. A lot of confidence in the corner of Dale Brown. And I'm sure up in Calgary, Canada right now, Let's there's go. a lot on, of cheering on. going on with Brian Strong and the folks at NSD, the gym that he works at. They're having a big party in Calgary tonight to see if their man can bring home the IBF title. All Brown got to keep doing is what he's doing. He ain't got to change up what he's doing. Keep lots of jab, punch off the jab, and don't get careless. He just did get careless. He threw a lazy jab. Let's go. Oh, what's up? Now. No Friday night no fights push. presented by AutoZone coming to you from the Seminal Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. Joe Tessitore and Kevin Kelly with you. You are watching the IBF Cruiserweight title fight. O'Neal Bell in the purple. And Dale Brown is now dealing with a second cut that has started near the left eye as a right hand comes in from O'Neal Bell. What an exciting fight it's been. Now a short right hand from Dale Brown. And it's the cut now near the left eye that is really starting to affect this fight. Look at that pump. Watch those right hands from Bell. Get he digs to the jump. body, tries to go back jump. with an overhand right. He's got a meaty target now with that Stop cut pushing. left Stop eye pushing. of Dale Get those Brown. Up right now. Dale Brown had O'Neill Bell hurt in that third round. O'Neill's legs look a little bit better than they were looking before early on. His knees were locking. I don't know exactly why. His punching power is getting a little bit better now. He's getting a little bit more relaxed in the fight. Uh, his knees are bending now. I don't know what went on early in the fight, but his legs did not look right to me. Brown puts his punches together. Now there's another right hand coming in from Bell. A lot of action here in round number four. That boxing stuff has gone out the window, Kev. I knew it would, you know, it's almost like you, you, you watch Turo Gotti. Sometimes he tries, you, you win it, when he's going to start fighting again. Dicks to the body. And Lil Bell is trying to punch now. He's starting to come out of that pocket again. Dale Brown isn't too shy either, Kev. They both... Right well, hand, left hand. Misses that time. And O'Neal Bell says, bring it on. Who lands last can actually land last right here. I mean, both men are punching convincingly hard. I think Dale Brown has had his moments, but not in this round. He hasn't hurt O'Neal Bell any good. Oh. Right hand comes in from Bell, and Brown goes back. Great comeback in this fourth round from O'Neal Bell. Dale Brown still very game, very active, and very much in it. But he was cut near the left eye here in this fourth round after having Bell hurt in the third round. As a man, I'm flesh and blood. I can be destroyed. But it's a symbol. 22nd. Only on Direct TV. Only. Time! Get over there. Look hey, at that T bone on, cut Let's above the left going. eye of Dale Brown. Kevin, how did it happen? Time happened in. with a straight overhand right as you right there. It came down this slicing motion, and that's what ripped toward it, cut open, wide open, left him bleeding. Blood dripped on the side of his face. But I don't think it's on the eye, so it interferes with the fight. So. We'll let it continue. And we'll monitor that. It's almost like shaped in a shape of a seven. So it's got potential to tear and open up a little worse. You see the punches in round number four, a round in which O'Neal Bell 
23 of his 24 connects were power shots, so so much for the boxing. We can put that game plan to sleep real quick. Well, I'm going to outbox the his boxer. His legs look a lot better now. I don't know what happened early on in this fight, but his, his legs looked really bad early on the fight. I mean, he looked like he was too much trouble. I mean, was that part, part of a plan or something? I mean, he didn't look too healthy there. Fires in with a lead right hand, does Bell. Right now, there with the cowboy, to utilize the jabs. Stick, stick back to what you used to do. Box, box, box. He's not boxing. He's not even throwing punches right about now. He's got to utilize the jab. And of course, O'Neill Bell is throwing wide right hands. He's got to come straight down the line, like right there. We throw straight shots and move to his left or right. The cut is trickling some blood down the side of his face. And uh, that's what the cowboy needs to do. Stay on the outside and frustrate O'Neill Bell and get him to reach for him so he can catch him coming in. And he needs that jab to be just a touch more active here. He knew going in that that would be the game plan. To make Bell think at all times and think about that jab. I believe that the cowboy is distracted by that cut. And why I agree, Kev. He's I not jabbing. He's, I think he's a little nervous that O'Neill Bell's going to go over the top with that counter, right hand. Counter right, right back to right that cut. Exactly. And that's what he's nervous of. So many things play a factor in this sweet hey, science. Hey, hey, watch that back of the head. Watch the back of the head. Final minute here of round number five. For Dale Brown, the third time that he has stepped up and gone after a world title. For O'Neill Bell, he's been patiently awaiting this moment. The Cowboy's not throwing any jabs. He'd be better off if he jab, jab, and then step to the right, jab, jab, step to the left, and confuse O'Neill Bell, but instead he's staying, he's, he's, jab, he's moving, but he's not punching off that movement. Down six fewer than O'Neill Bell in terms of the jabs, according to CompuBox, and that is a stat that he cannot afford to be on the deficit. Overhand right over the top that time. Now works behind that jab, but as we come to the end of this fifth round, definitely a round in which Dale Brown has slowed. Let's see how they finish up. Watch your head, watch your head, man, all right? We look all right? Well, I take pain medicine for my arthritis. She's able to help. He said, this time we did everything right when Dale Brown was asked about his training for his third chance at a world title. You can prepare all you want, but Kevin Kelly in the midst of battle, when that cut opens up and you're tested and your opponent is firing off with power, it's tough to prepare for that. That changes everything. Adversity, that's a, a ultimate adversity. I mean, cuts, broken hands, pull ligaments, uh, anything can go wrong in the ring. And, and when it does, then you, you can't, you can prepare for that. I've just trained blindfolded. I've hit the bag blindfolded. I've hit the bag with closed eyes. I've hit the bag with one hand. So things happen. Kevin Kelly's scorecard through five rounds. Let's go, let's go. I promise hey, we'll hey, get hey, that hey, to you hey, soon hey, enough. Hey, hey. No, no, no. I got it right now. 47 47. And that's because of a 10 8 third round for Dale Brown. That's when the big right hands came in, and O'Neill Bell was hurt. There was no knockdown, which you say is mandatory. No, but that felt like a 10 8 round, Kevin. He took, he took a yes. pound, and I mean, I thought, I thought O'Neill Bell was going to hit the canvas in that round, but he didn't, so I'll give him credit. His legs is recovered. It seemed like he had a problem early on with his legs. Um, his footing still doesn't look right, but his knees look a lot better. His legs look better, look strong, got some strength underneath him. He's got to cut the ring off. He's just walking in on Dale Brown. Dale Brown is There's not a good boxing. combination. Brown trying to escape danger after O'Neill Bell put together that combination. Three-year-old from Calgary, Canada, Dale Brown. His pace has slowed after he had O'Neill Bell in trouble. One thing Bell that's happened now. is big time is that Dale, Dale Brown is walking straight in. And he catches O'Neill Bell when he walks in. But then he turns and turn and throw another combination and turn again and throw another combination. Instead, he gets out of it. 
O'Neal Bell talked about the fact that he's so impressed with Dale Brown's angles and his ability to sidestep. Brown was very complimentary to Bell in terms of his power. We've seen a bit of both exhibited tonight. Round number six scheduled for 12 for the IBF Cruiserweight title. Bill Brown's actually having a good round here. He's catching O'Neill Bell walking with some good shots. And O'Neill Bell is walking around getting killed with shots, not cutting the ring off. Halfway through on Friday Night Fights, presented by AutoZone. All right, back here in our Friday Night Fight studios. Again, Sugar Shane Mosley with us all night. What do you think of this fight, Shane? I think it's a great fight. It's an action-packed fight. All right, what do you think? Dale Brown hanging in there tough. Uh, do you think he catches him with one of those right hands, or do you think eventually Bell wears him down and walks him down? Well, I think uh, Bell is doing a great job now. I give Bell a, a, a little more rounds than, um, than, uh, than Brown. But it's a great fight. I think that maybe he might get him with a good right hand or whatever. All right, again, Shane Mosley with us throughout the night. We're going to send it back to Joe Tessitore and the flushing flash. Kevin, what do you think about that? Well, the way I see it, like right now with the fight, um, it's looking like, you know, Dale Brown, when he boxes, he's boxing stuff on the outside. He's looking pretty good. Straight right hand. Uh, Bell is looking for a big punch, looking for one shot to knock out um, Brown. But uh, it could happen only if Dale Brown stops long enough in front of him. Kevin McDermott, the trainer for Dale Brown, told his charge after that sixth round. He's slowing down his O'Neal Bell. You need to jab, jab, jab some more, and then you'll see everything coming a lot easier. Of course, 39 jabs in that sixth round. That's the high in the fight for Brown. Early on, it was his power punches that were doing the damage, so he stayed more with that, especially in the third round when he had O'Neal Bell hurt. Joe Brown right now is doing an excellent boxing job on O'Neal Bell. Right now, Lil Bell punches a little bit wide. He's going the outside of Dill Brown. Dill Brown throwing straight shots down the middle. He's catching O'Neal Bell with some good shots. O'Neal Bell's balance is not exactly that good right now. And uh, Dill Brown right now is, is boxing O'Neal Bell very well. He's doing very well Let's this round. I, uh, I got it scored unofficially, of course, 56, 57. I, I got O'Neal losing by one point. Of course, the early rounds, I thought that he was, he was taking a bean early. And uh, he came back into the fight. But he's not busy with his jab. He's not cutting the ring off on Dale Brown at all. He's just walking in. He's getting hit with shots as he walks in. And Brown's confidence is getting better. Let's go. Come on. On the inside is where Brown wants to stay away from. There's the work at range with the jab. And even if it's not landing, it's still effective just by fighting his controlled and his pace style fight. Overhand looping right. It may be awkward, but at times effective from O'Neal Bell. Yeah, but it's one punch, and I don't know if it's enough for those combinations that he's getting hit with. I mean, it's one punch in the whole round. He landed one shot, but I'm pretty sure that Dale Brown's landing percentage right now is, is at its height. He's landing very good jabs. He's got O'Neal Bell at the end of his punches. He's landing combination after combination since this, this round started. There you go again, Lance. You know, he's not hitting with sufficient of hard shots to stop O'Neal Bell, but they are landing. And he, there it goes, right there. Right there, No Bell got hit with a, a counter. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, what do you think of that one? Del, I mean, Dale Brown is getting back into this fight with his boxing, and, and, and No Bell is waiting on the outside. He's a recipient of those punches. This is by far the best round we've seen out of Dale Brown since that third round when it was the powerful right hand that had hurt Dale Brown. Strong effort, volume, and efficiency from Dale Brown's short right hand. Here we take a look at the counter punch by Dale Brown. We don't know Bell gets sloppy, he gets caught. And that's him getting sloppy right there, and that's him getting hit and counted. Round number eight, IBF cruiserweight title on the line. O'Neal Bell in the purple trunks. Dale Cowboy low Brown, down, the KG down. veteran. His third shot at a world title. Busy, Dale. Will he hit the jackpot tonight? Well, I got him winning right now, 67, 65. Unofficially, of course, you know, um, he's doing pretty good. When he boxes, he does very well. He keeps O'Neal Bell, and he's punching first and punching last. And O'Neal Bell is just sitting out there waiting for the telegram to come say, okay, throw a punch. And he throws wide and wild, and his punches come behind the head of Dale Brown. So right now, I got Dale Brown winning 
by two points, unofficially, of course. But, you know, uh, O'Neal Bell is throwing one shot at a time. 38%. The copy box numbers from round number seven. A very, very strong round for Dale Brown. Let's visit with his trainer, Kevin McDermott. Kevin, keep listening in between rounds, and I hear you say time and time again, he's getting frustrated. He's getting frustrated. Let your hands go, Dale. That's right. That's right. He is. We just want to keep what we'll do what Bell can do, and that's box. All right, let's go. Punch out of Been now. doing that well the past two rounds. Right, 73 up, jabs in total, landing 19. How key is the jab, Kevin? It's the key to this whole fight. It keeps, it keeps the right hand off. When he throws the right hand, it blocks the right hand, and it backs O'Neal back up onto his back foot. Will, do you think you're ahead in this fight? And if so, will you tell Dale? No, I'm not going to tell him he's ahead. Not yet, anyway. I do believe he's ahead. Good, that's Good it, Dale. Move your feet and move now. Kevin, give us a glimpse of what you'll tell him after this eighth round. I'm going to wait and see what happens for the rest of the round here. What do you think? Do you think that Dale can knock out O'Neal Bell? We are not. We're just looking at outboxing O'Neal Bell. But do you, are you realizing that the legs of O'Neal Bell doesn't look right? We know what's going on. We've already told him he's slowing down. Kevin McDermott, fine trainer of Dale Brown. Thank you very nice. much. Come on, Dale. Second attack. Jab, jab, jab. Come on, Dell, get the left hand going. Yes! Good score by Dale Brown. Final minute of eighth round. He is working his game plan precisely. All that work in Vegas has done him good. I can see he's only problem that he's doing, he's, he's stepping out of range. He's got O'Neal Bell's legs reacting the same way as they react in the third round. You see O'Neal Bell's legs. His legs are locking, he's on his heels. He's walking right into shots. It's very dangerous for Neil Bell right now. But another strong round for Dale Brown. He is looking sharp as we come to the stretch run. Hey! Friday night fights presented by AutoZone from the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. I'm Joe Tessitore alongside Kevin Kelly. And if you like watching dreams Let's come go, true, then stick around for these next four rounds because somebody's will, and if Dale Brown in the black with red stays the course and gives his trainer, Kevin McDermott, what he asked for, the best four rounds of his life, then the long-awaited championship of the world will be around his waist. Right now, I don't think Bell has any answers for what Dale Brown is doing. He's, oh. he's getting out jabs, he's getting out hustles, he's getting out boxing, he's getting out counterpunched. There's nothing that O'Neal Bell is doing right now that's helping him. The CompuBox stats proved that true in that eighth round. He had eight connects, did O'Neal Bell. That was his low total in the fight. And only threw 38 punches. That's just not enough work. 77-75 on go, Kevin on. Kelly's scorecard come on, in go. favor of Dale Brown, the likable veteran from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. O'Neal Bell still searching for answers on the inside. He's frustrated. He's reaching. Right now, he doesn't have a game plan together right now. Uh, he does utilize a jab. He's going to get back to his jab, O'Neal Bell. The way to get a knockout is you got to come behind a jab. He's throwing one punch at a time. You see his balance? He throws the right hand. And he almost turns southpaw, and he's off balance, and he can't recover. And that's why O'Neal Bell's having so much trouble. He's a one-punch fighter. Overhand right. That's all he has. And he's getting walking into every punch that Cowboy's throwing. It's the only moments he has is right there. The Cowboy gives him moments. That's it. Other than that, the Cowboy's on the outside, boxing real successful. And like I said, one thing you can't forget about Neil Bell, he can punch with either hand. You know, O'Neal Bell, you could make the argument was potentially overconfident coming into this fight. A fight that he thought he'd have in February for the IBF belt against right, Kelvin Davis. A fight in which go. he went as far as to bring in Eric Buxton, his old high school wrestling coach, to work his corner as his cut man. A sign of overconfidence? Well, you know, I asked his cut man in the meeting about what to use, the moxillin, the 1,000 solution, all that stuff, and he didn't know. And uh, thank God that uh, the cut that Dill Brown has 
O'Neal's lucky that he don't have that cut. Yeah, and cuts aside, it just signals to you that this is a guy that was very confident, so much so that he could use a cut man for nothing more than inspiration. End of round number nine. Secrets, new inspirations at Olive Garden. Round number 10, scheduled for 12 with the IBF title on the line between these veteran cruiserweights, O'Neal Bell and Dale Cowboy Brown. Power punches through round nine, a category in which O'Neal Bell should be dominating. Bell landed 39%, and he had the biggest punch of the fight in the third round with a right hand that had O'Neal Bell hurt. Joe Tessitore and Kevin Kelly. Ringside with you as Dale Brown trying to box his way to a world title. O'Neal Bell searching for answers with the power that he's been known for. 22 knockouts out of his 23 wins. Gave many of the middle rounds away as Bell settled into steady work with the jab and smart boxing. Let's now bring in Sugar Shane Mosley, the three-time world champion. Shane, why is this fight going the way it's going? I think it's going the way it's going um, because Bell's just kind of following him around the ring. Bell's following Brown around the ring and and is being able to be outboxed. But I think it's a close fight, though. Shane, don't you see here that right now that Dale Brown, for some strange reason, decides to lay in front of O'Neal Bell and let O'Neal Bell work? Yeah. <laughs> Well, as you see right there, he caught him with a good left hook. I think he figured out that Bell don't have as much steam on his punches anymore, and he's trying to uh, get that, that good left hook in there. So you think Bell is slowing down? I think Bell is slowing down a little bit. He's, he's overexerting himself to try to get that knockout, and I don't think he has his, the same steam on his punches as he had once in the, in the early rounds. Shane Mosley doing a great job tonight. Thank you very much. They look to trade here in the final minute of this 10th round. Short right hand on the inside from Brown. O'Neal Bell. He may be desperate, but he's capable. He has gotten off the floor before. He's come back to win by knockout before. He's been behind on the scorecards before. He'll need to do that here, most likely, against Dale Brown as we enter the championship rounds. Last 30 seconds of this 10th round. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Two cuts that Dale Brown has been dealing with all night. The one in the center of the forehead has not played a factor. And the left eye, that was streaming, but now that's under control. He placed a good uppercut. The championship rounds coming up on Friday Night Fights, presented by AutoZone. Oh! Friday Night Fights from Hollywood, Florida. And will oh, we have a Hollywood-type ending to this cruiserweight title bout? O'Neal Bell, Dale Brown, round number 11. O'Neal Bell showed glimpses in that 10th round, Kevin. That was a tough round to score. Do you think he's got enough left? I scored it dead even. I, I, I kind of gave O'Neal Bell the first half of the round and, and the Cowboy the second part of the round. But right now, Dale Brown is doing away with O'Neal Bell right now in this round. He's landing but more effective shots. I think O'Neal Bell has, might have shot his last load the last round, and he looks very tired, his mouth's open. O'Neal Bell in his career has three knockouts in the 11th round. He knows when to turn it on, but will he be able to turn it on against the smart boxer who is so determined, the 33-year-old Dale Brown, the third time he stepped up and has tried to win a cruiserweight title belt. He swears this time will be different. So far, it has been. He was stopped in his previous two attempts to win the title. The last two rounds, the punch stats. Bell, 48 out of 162. Brown, a little more judicious, 39 out of 121. Defense to the body much better than in the past does Dale Brown. We saw it right there. 
He's blocking much better. Joe Brown right now, see his energy levels up. He's going to win the championship rounds right now. He's trying to win them. He's definitely trying to win them right now. He's, he's got Manil Bell backing up. His power's not working. He's not getting off any punches. He just got caught. Del Brown caught him with a left hook to the face. And I tell you, the judge is definitely watching this action right now. And uh, he's got O'Neal Bell against the ropes. Nelson is standing again against the ropes and fighting him in. Now he tries to come off. Short right hand, one, two. Stop punching, step back, stop punching. Let's go, get the down, I have to question O'Neal Bell's conditioning. I think that he, something either psychologically, psychologically or something physically is bothering him. And he looks very tired, fatigued. He didn't expect to get a knockout earlier or something because so he looks very tired, very lethargic. I hearken back. back to the overconfidence. This was a hungry Dale Brown that left his beautiful wife and two children behind in Calgary to go to Vegas for a long training camp. Meanwhile, O'Neill Bell, we touched on it. Maybe it was a sign bringing in his high school wrestling coach to work his corner as a cut man. Maybe a sign of overconfidence as he's pushed back from another stiff jab from Dale Brown. They will have one round to go to determine the IBF Cruiserweight Championship Time. of the World. Okay, look. We appreciate your time. We appreciate your efforts. You always give a great effort. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Dale Brown. So that wraps up our evening from Hollywood, Florida. The corner of Dale Brown. They've been with him for a long time. They know how hard he works. And as you heard them say, it's the last three minutes to your dream. One round for the rest of your life. The same can be said for O'Neal Bell. The problem is... Many of those rounds are now in the rear view mirror in a fight that he was not primed throughout. Right now I got Dale Brown winning on the Moscow cards unofficially, of course, 105-103. Right now, Neil Bell is desperate. He needs a knockout to win the Moscow cards. And if Dale Brown boxes successfully, I think he'll be world champion walking out with the IBF belt around his waist. Fights past 11. Dale Brown has been here three times. O'Neal Bell, we told you, he's knocked out three opponents in the 11th round. So some uncharted waters for O'Neal Bell. The 12th round, he's never seen. Well, right now, O'Neal Bell is very sloppy. He's, he's still trying to get to Dale Brown, punching very wide. And, and that's the first combination that O'Neal Bell landed, he threw it straight. But he got, he, of course, he got counterpunched. He got hit in turn. So uh, right now, Dale Brown's doing an excellent boxing job on O'Neal Bell. Let's go. Come on, come on. Stop punching. Step I want to remind you that coming up next is Somos ESPN Deportes. That's coming up after this cruiserweight title fight. A two-time world title challenger was Dale Brown. He never knew if he would get this opportunity again. But he won five straight. He worked his way back. And he rededicated him to a sport that has been his life's passion. And if these judges Go, see it the on. way this crowd Stop has and the way we have, he should be one minute away from calling himself a world champion. To the body. Now Bell digs in. Still searching for answers on the inside. A place that he should have had the advantage all night long. Bell's legs still don't look right in his last round. I believe that it seemed like Dale Brown's time he hits him. 
We get a kind of reaction. I mean, there it goes. A good Short shot. left hand. Good shot from the Cowboy. Let's go. Come on. Stop punching. Step back. Last 20 seconds. Mouthpiece has hit the canvas. Armando Garcia is letting it go. O'Neal Bell needs something here. Dale Brown, 10 seconds for the rest of your life. It was worthy of being called a championship fight. Dale Brown, his best effort at this level we have seen in his entire career. O'Neal Bell had his moments, but Dale Brown, he may have his moments when we come back. We will hear the judges' scores when we return to Friday Night Vice presented by AutoZone. We may soon have a Cinderella man here at the Seminole Hard Rock in Hollywood, Florida. O'Neal Bell, Dale Brown, the total punches with the IBF Cruiserweight title on the line. The Cowboy, 218 to 185. He had a 29-17 advantage in that last round with 26 power connects. Kevin Kelly had it 116 to 112. I had it nine rounds to three for Dale Brown. Let's see what Damian Pinto has to say. Who's the new IBF champ? Ladies and gentlemen, how about a big round of applause for both of these warriors right here? Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecards, and here are your scores. Judge Michael Pernick scores this fight 115 to 113. Judge Robert Hoyle scores this fight 116 to 112. And Judge Rich Green sees it at 117 to 111. All three judges scoring in favor of your winner by unanimous decision and new IBF Cruiserweight Champion of the World, O'Neal. Wow. Give him hell. Wow. I am telling you right now. Oh my goodness. I am telling you right now. You got to be kidding me with 117, 111. And I totally disagree altogether. Totally, totally disagree. I had a 115, 112. I saw Dale Brown win that fight. I would go and you know I what? O'Neal Bell's going to come down. We're going to interview him, and I'm going to tell him that flat out. I'll I tell him, know I what thought he you lost, and I saw you lose the fight. I know what I saw. I, I didn't, I'm very honest with this fight. He did not win this fight tonight. This is a guy that was hurt so badly, you had to score a 10 8 third round, did you not? He was outbounced throughout the middle rounds, and the copy box numbers strongly favored Dale Brown. That is just unbelievable. But then again, we are in the state of Florida that doesn't have a, a Herculean state commission. We'll try to sort this thing out. The bottom line is O'Neal Bell is the new IBF Cruiserweight Champion. Let's send it back to the studio to Brian Kenny and Sugar Shane. All right, now I, I know why Joe and Kevin are all that upset. <laughs> Shane, you and I are up there. We're, we're scoring the fight, too. Yeah. And, and now you had it 116, 112. For yeah. Dale Brown. For Dale Brown. Uh, yeah. That said, I mean, I'm not outraged by it. In that 117, 111, I agree, is a little far skewed. But what are your mm. thoughts on the decision here? Well, there's a couple of rounds that could have went either way, but uh, you know, you never know. I mean, uh, I, I viewed it 116, 112, and I'm watching it on the on the TV. It could have been a different story, a different uh, something different in in the actual auditorium where you have a different view, right. different angle, but. I, I can't. I see Dale Brown win the fight. Yeah, I thought he won too. And yet, while we're watching the fight, we're talking about it here. I said, don't be shocked if a few of these rounds could go right over the other way. Maybe O'Neill Bell looking at you know heavier hands, as you say. You yeah. hear that whacking on the body of Dale Brown. Maybe they go back the other way. I know why Joe and Teddy, uh, are, uh, Joe, excuse me, and Kevin are all uh, riled up about it. But again, yeah. I, I can see why O'Neill Bell may have won that fight. Although 117, 111, I agree with Joe. May maybe a draw. Uh, it was a little. A draw wouldn't have stunned me at all. All right, <laughs> let's talk about uh, the welterweight the picture right now. Zab Judah is the welterweight champion. He just knocked out Cosme Rivera. What do you think of Zab? What about you and Zab somewhere in the future? Well, I think Zab is a, is a great fighter, and um, you know, he looked very well, very good against Cosme Rivera. Although, I mean, Cosme Rivera came in the ring at 147. He weighed in 146, came in the ring at 147. Zab came in the ring at 151. So they were both 
very small for the welterweight uh, division. Right. Um, maybe someday in the, uh, in the near future, maybe in no November, October, me and Zab can get on. I'd like to take one uh, one more fight and, uh, and we can we can talk about it. Yeah, I tell you, Rivera somehow, I, you know, I even asked, uh, you know, our, our own guys on .com, the guys at Ring, how did Rivera get into the top ten? Or is Zab Judah, you know, just that, that powerful now in the welterweight class and he just takes a guy out this easily? You tell me. Has he gotten that much better? Well, I mean, he has a lot of speed, and he's brung up his power into the division. But like I said, it didn't seem like there were real welterweights in there. The guy comes in the ring at 147, that's a junior welterweight to me. All right, what are your plans? What do you want done in the next year? Well, I would like to have a fight sometime maybe in July, August. Uh, that would be great. If I can, then maybe get the, well, maybe get the fight maybe in... Um, you know, December or January with the with one of the fighters, either Margarita, Zab Judah, I mean, De La Hoya is talking about fighting. There's, there's all kind of possibilities out there. You'll always be there for Oscar, right? If Oscar comes back and says, you know what, Shane, I know I can beat you. I want to do it one more time. What do you say? I said, let's do it. Let's do it. All right. What about Antonio Margarito? Have there been negotiations? You read things on the dot-com sites? Anything there haven't been there? any negotiations with me and Margarito whatsoever. I think, uh, I don't know who put that press out there. I haven't heard anything. I heard it on the press saying that that was offered $1.1 million to take a fight with uh, Margarito. Never heard anything. Um, I, I don't think I would take $1.1 million anyway to fight a Margarito. But, uh, you know, I, I would definitely fight anybody in the welterweight division, and I will fight anybody in the welterweight division. All right, Shane, it was great having you here on the program. Thank you so much. Great having you. Sugar Shane Mosley with us tonight. Mm -hmm. We wish you the best of luck. We'll see you. We'll be following you very closely. We want to send it back out now uh, to Joe and Kevin. They're with the winner. They don't agree with the winner, but they have the winner, O'Neal Bell. Guys? <laughs> Ryan Kenny, thank you very much. Congratulations, O'Neal. You are the new IBF Cruiserweight Champion of the World. I'm going to let you know flat out, I thought you lost the fight fairly convincingly. Very convincing. Why I, I actually do. Kevin and I both had you on the opposite side I congratulate you all he could so what, was what, did, you, what did you think I thought that you were uh, in the third round and completely off box in the middle rounds you gave a very game effort as you always do you're always capable with your power punching but we felt both the compu box number showed it and what was shown in the ring that you did not win this fight I showed I showed resilience you know he hurt me I came back I was the aggressor in the fight you know I was the aggressive fight I can't take none from him he outboxed me in a sense but I was the aggressor I, I busted him up look at him chin head eyes and everything you tell I me agree. I lost I agree, you busted I was the aggressive. Well, you couldn't even take it. Well, one thing I think you're going to go over watch the footage. First of all, first of all, I'd like to thank everyone who got me here. Most of all, the most high. Without him, I wouldn't get there. Without him, I still wouldn't get here. Well, you're a wonderful professional. I'm not taking that away from you. You know how much I respect you, and I do congratulate you. But we had it the other way. Kevin. I had it scored 115, 112 in the fight. Uh, a lot of the early rounds, I thought you lost early rounds. I gave you four rounds out of, out of the 12 rounds. And, 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 and I thought... I scored it, the studio scored it, Shane scored it. We all thought that you didn't lose the fight. You know, watch it on tape. I know right now it's kind of hard to tell if you won or lost because you was in there. I know, I'm a fighter. Bottom line is you did win. But you yes, won the title. Yes, I did. Yes, yes, I did. Oh, you going to give him a rematch? Now I would defend. I told him. I told him he's a very good boxer. I said anytime he wants a rematch, he has it. But let me go after the moment, top of them. Then, then I'll show you who the real champion is. You know what I'm saying? congratulations. Thank you, and thank you for your time. Thank you, Let's bring in Dale Cowboy Brown who was stepping up to the plate for the third time for a world title. Dale, I assume you just heard what we said. Brian Kenny, Shane Mosley, Kevin Kelly, and I all scored this fight for you. You know what, I, I thought I worked harder, but having said that, guys, I can always work harder. I, I heard O'Neal say he busted me up. Look, I got a headbutt underneath the chin, one right hand to the eye. Yeah, he cut me some big shots, but he did not bust me up, trust me. One or two shots, this fight looks totally different. He cut me with one shot, man, he didn't bust me up. How come you didn't go, for, I mean, at times, I thought his legs looked really, really bad. I mean, they looked like you could take him out on serious points. Why didn't you go for the knockout? You know what, I did, and I, I was looking for it. I went back to the corner. I thought I was getting a little bit too wide, Kevin. Uh, I was swinging my punches. I should have been pit, 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 looking for a bigger fourth, fifth shot. But I was looking for one big shot, because I saw I heard him behind the ear a couple times, on the jaw a couple times. But then I was trying to load up with the big shot. I should have went pop, pop, and then load up on a big Why one. Why did you step? I, I mean, it was times where you landed a good combination. You had him buck, you had him hurt. And instead of applying more pressure and throwing the combinations, you stepped off him. I believe that's what hurt you in the fight. Absolutely. Guaranteed. It hurt me. Uh, if I kept sustained pressure, and like I said, just pit, 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 move my head, move my head. I didn't move my head as, half as much as I should have this fight. But you moved your hands. That's why I thought you had the victory. I appreciate that. Uh, you know what? I thought it was a good fight. Uh, hats off to him. He's a, he's a tough guy. And like he 
said in the, work, in the ring. He says he wants to give me a rematch, and I'm game. I think I can take that off. Phil, just quickly, what was your reaction when those scores were being read? You know, I, when they said 115, 113, you know what? I, I thought I had the fight. When they said 117, I 117 111, I mean, I thought, yeah, that's a little bit crazy. You know, it was a good fight. I think it was a good cruiserweight fight, and it just gives uh, kudos to the cruiserweight division where we can fight a little bit. We appreciate your time. We appreciate your efforts. You always give a great effort. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Dale Brown. So that wraps up our evening from Hollywood, Florida.